Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host Matthew Macario and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we take you from point A to grade A. Hello, welcome back. How are you? Hope you're well. In this episode, we're going to start looking at another group of organic compounds. We're going to start looking at the alcohols. We're going to first define what is an alcohol, what's the functional group there. We'll talk about the different classifications of alcohols. We'll talk a little bit about how alcohols are manufactured or synthesized. And we'll mention physical properties of alcohols and touch on the combustion of alcohols. So first, what is an alcohol? An alcohol is an organic compound that has an OH group. So it has a bond between a carbon and an OH group. And specifically, the bond is between the carbon and the oxygen of that OH group. And the oxygen requires two bonds, so that's also bonded to the hydrogen of that group too. And to be really specific, that is the only elements of the functional group. In other words, that carbon is also bonded only to carbons or hydrogens. It hasn't got any other functional group attached to it. The generic formula for alcohols is CN, H, 2N plus 1, OH. And N in that case is the number of carbon atoms in the molecule. So for example, if there are two carbons in the chain, then N is two. So the formula would be C2H5OH because that fits that formula where N is two. C2H5OH, by the way, is ethanol. Ethanol is the alcohol that we know as alcohol in alcoholic drinks. There are many, many other compounds within the group alcohols as well. So the next thing we were going to do is to talk about the classification of alcohols. And the classifications are primary, secondary, and tertiary. So what do they mean? Primary alcohol is one that has its OH group on the end carbon of a chain. So if we think of the simplest alcohol that just has one carbon, that would be methanol. That is a primary alcohol because the only carbon is, of course, the end of that chain. So the OH group is on the end of the chain. Ethanol, with its two carbons, doesn't matter which carbon the OH group's on, it's going to be one end of the chain. So ethanol is also a primary alcohol. When we think of alcohols with longer chains, the functional group might not be on the end carbon. So a primary alcohol would be where it is on the end carbon. So propan 1-ol, where there are three carbons in the chain and the alcohol group is on one of the end carbons, that is a primary alcohol. So what is a secondary alcohol? Well, that's where the functional group, the OH group, is attached to a carbon that is not an end carbon, it's mid-chain. So if we have three carbons in the chain, and the OH group is on the middle one of the carbons, so we have propan 2-ol, that would be a secondary alcohol. Tertiary alcohol would be a similar situation. Not only is the OH group on a, a mid-chain carbon, but that carbon also has a side chain. So for example, 2-methyl propan 2-ol, where the second carbon in the chain of three has the OH group, but there's also a side chain of CH3 from that same carbon as well. So that carbon is effectively attached to three more carbons plus the OH group. It's a tertiary alcohol. Why are primary, secondary and tertiary alcohol classifications important? Well, it matters when it comes to the reactions that alcohols undergo, and we'll talk about that in an upcoming episode. How about the physical properties of alcohols? Well, the physical properties of alcohols tend to be dominated by the functional group, by the OH group. So one thing we could say about that group is that because it's an oxygen and a hydrogen bonded to each other, that it allows hydrogen bonding to occur between adjacent molecules of the alcohol. And that means that there will be greater intermolecular forces than there would be for other organic molecules of similar mass. And therefore, we would get considerably higher melting points and boiling points than we would do for other organic compounds of, of similar molecular mass. That bonding also means that alcohols tend to be water-soluble. 
Let's talk about the combustion of alcohols. The principles of combustion of alcohols is really quite similar to that of alkanes that we talked about in our introductory episode on alkanes. Just because there's already an oxygen present doesn't mean there is any complication in the reaction occurring, and it shouldn't really create any complication in balancing the equation. When we balance an equation, we just need to be aware that we're going to get exactly the same products, carbon dioxide and water, as if we were combusting an alkane or an alkene. We just need to add slightly less oxygen because there is already one atom of oxygen per molecule of alcohol present. And we just need to include that when we balance our equation. Okay, so how do we make alcohols? How do we make ethanol in particular? There are several ways to synthesize or manufacture ethanol. The first one is the long-known fermentation of sugars, fermentation of glucose. So we need to start with glucose, usually dissolve it in water in some manner, and then under the right conditions, allow it to ferment with the presence of yeast. Yeast contains an enzyme which will ferment the glucose and the products will be ethanol and carbon dioxide. That's been commonly used for millennia to make alcoholic drinks. But in modern times, where we have a large requirement for industrial use of ethanol, it's a little bit inefficient because it's rather slow and the product is a mixture. So the industrial way of making a much purer ethanol product and in a much quicker time is to hydrate ethene C2H4. And that's done by mixing ethene and water in the form of steam at high temperature and usually in the presence of phosphoric acid catalyst and that hydrates the ethene to give ethanol and no other side products other than the steam there is no other water present so the product is a much much purer ethanol than you would get from fermentation Okay, so let's think about what we've talked about today. We've defined alcohols as being organic compounds where the functional group is an OH group. We talked about the generic formula as well. And then we defined primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols and said that that classification is important because we might get different reactivity, we might get different products from reactions. And we'll talk about that in more detail in a further episode. We talked about the properties of alcohol and the fact that they are dominated by the functional group and the fact that that allows hydrogen bonding between the molecules or between alcohol molecules and water. We've touched on combustion and we've also mentioned the different industrial ways of synthesizing alcohol, either by fermentation or by hydration of ethene. Well, that's all for this episode. If you've got any questions on this topic, I'd be delighted to hear from you. The best way to get in touch is to come over to the podcast Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple. And I'm very happy to answer your questions there. You'll also be able to find me on Instagram at chemistry made simple. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it useful. And if you have had value from it, do consider visiting our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple, where you'll be able to ask deeper questions about this topic and get more support for your studies too. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode. And until then, do look after yourself and goodbye.